Good evening, um, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I want to thank you for coming out tonight. My name is Kendall Harris, and this is my trusty sidekick for the night, Lauren Townsend. Hi, guys. So we are music majors at TFC, and we would just like to invite you to enjoy the concert for tonight. Uh, we're so glad that you're here. <laughs> um, tonight we present a Veterans Day concert in honor of America's veterans. On the stage before you, we have the eighth grade members of the North Habersham Middle School Symphonic Band, the conductor, uh, Emery Warnock, and the Chicoa Falls College Band. Uh, they are under the baton of Professor Yuri Enriquez. Tonight's concert is a cumulation uh, of all of the inaugural College Day Festival for the middle school students today. Um, so. They have experienced classes. They were in my Music Theory 3 class today. It's a really hard class, and they were all awake during it, so that was great. Um, they also went to rehearsals, lectures, master classes, athletic events, and they toured the campus. Um, they even got to eat with us, lunch and dinner in the dining hall. Um, we are so excited to present a Veterans Day concert tonight, and we sincerely hope that you enjoy all of the music you hear. So sit back and relax. Well, actually, don't relax too hard because we have a test afterwards that Lauren and I are giving. We have a lot of information for you guys. <laughs> it is traditional as patri patriotic events. Uh, to honor each branch, branch of the armed forces with its own service song and for the members of each branch to assume the position of attention during the duration of the song. The order of tonight's medley will include the United States Marine Corps' Marine Hymn, the United States Army Quezon Song, the United States Coast Guard's Sempra Paratus, the United States Air Force's U.S. Air Force song, and the United States Navy's Anchor Away. We ask that each member of the armed forces to please stand when you're, you hear your song of your particular branch.
thin, numerous, and varied. Jacob Parrott was the first of a group of six men awarded the medal for their actions in the great locomotive chase in April 1862. They were the first ever to receive the Medal of Honor. 19-year-old Parrott was severely beaten after his capture and interrogation. Despite his severe treatment, he remained silent. After the successful escape of six raiders, they became first to receive the Medal of Honor. Parrott was the first of those six, making his award the first presentation ever of the Medal of Honor in history. After the war, he remained friends with fellow raider Wilson Brown, Parrott's only son, John Marion Parrott, uh, married Edith Gertrude Brown, one of Wilson's, Wilson Brown's eight children. In the early 1950s, Disney Studios released The Great Locomotive Chase, a movie to represent Andrew's Raiders. William Harvey Carney was the first African American to perform an action for which a Medal of Honor was awarded. But Robert Blake was the first to actually receive the medal. Blake's was issued in 1864. Carney did not receive his until 1900. William Harvey Carney was an African-American soldier during the American Civil War in 1900. He was awarded the Medal of Honor for his gallant gallantry in saving the regimental colors during the Battle of Fort Wagner in 1863. Changing the face of medicine was Mary Edwards Walker. Dr. Mary Walker was the first woman awarded the Congressional Medal of Honor for her works as a surgeon during the Civil War. Dr. Mary Walker was an outspoken advocate for women's rights and the first woman ever to receive the Congressional Medal of Honor. The next selection for tonight's concert is America the Beautiful, the rich legacy that the late Carmen Dragon left the musical world usually includes mention of his conducting work with the Glendale Symphony Orchestra, the Hollywood Bowl Orchestra, and the Capitol Symphony. In addition to his solid reputation as a consummate or orchestrator, most people are surprised to also learn that he won an Oscar in 1944, an Emmy in 1964, wrote the music for almost 40 feature films, and has his own star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Carmen Dragon, however, is best known for the iconic arrangement of America the Beautiful, which is scored in 1958. The dual scorings for both symphony, orchestra, and symphonic band, Samuel Ward's familiar tune enjoys a sumptuous feast of harmonic color and instrumental nuance. Here is America the Beautiful.
Medal of Honor is known as the Pyramid of Honor, the hierarchy of military awards for gallantry, valor, and heroism. The purple heart forms the base. At the top is the Medal of Honor, the nation's highest medal for valor in combat. It is unique in every way. It is the only military medal that is worn around the neck. Its recipients are the only individuals whom the President of the United States salutes as a matter of custom. The medal is awarded by the President in the name of the Congress to a member of the armed forces who distinguishes him or herself conspicuously by gallantry and intrepidity at the risk of his life above the, and beyond the call of duty while engaged in an action against an enemy of the United States, while engaged in military operations involving conflict with an opposing foreign force, or while serving with friendly foreign forces engaged in an armed conflict against an opposing armed force in which the United States is not belligerent party. To date, 3,516 medals of honor have been presented to 3,496 servicemen and to one woman. 19 men received two medals, 14 of them for two separate actions, and five received both Army and Navy medals of honor for the same action. Of the total, 2,449 medals have been awarded to U.S. Army soldiers. 748 medals have been awarded to members of the U.S. Navy. 299 medals have been awarded to U.S. Marines. 18 medals have been awarded to members of the U.S. Air Force. And one medal has been awarded to the U.S. Coast Guard. The band will now perform Procession of the Americas. The War on Terrorism began October 7, 2001, with U.S.-led Operation Enduring Freedom in Afghanistan after the terrorist attacks against the United States on September 11, 2001. Approximately 3,000 civ civilians and members of the military died as a result of the attacks in New York, Washington, D.C., and Pennsylvania. Today, the conflict continues. An effort to combat terrorism worldwide Begin, began in Afghanistan and continues with many operations. Operation Enduring Freedom, this campaign includes casualties that occurred between October 7, 2001 and December 31, 2014. 2,350 deaths have occurred and 
20,092 people have been injured in and around Afghanistan. Operation Freedom Centennial includes casualties that occurred in Afghanistan immediately after Operation Enduring Freedom, concluded, which concluded December 31, 2014. Operation Freedom Centennial began on the 1st of January 2015. To date, there are 40 U.S. deaths and 183 wounded in this current military operation. Operation Iraqi Freedom includes casualties that occurred in Iraq starting March 19, 2003. On August 31, 2010, President Obama announced that the American combat mission in Iraq had ended. To date, there are 4,424 U.S. deaths and 31,954 people wounded. Operation New Dawn includes casualties that occurred between September 1st, 2010 and December 15th, 2011. To date, there are 73 U.S. deaths and 295 wounded. Operation Inherent Resolve, effective October 15th, 2014, was created to wage war against the terrorist group, the Islamic State in Iraq, and the Levant along the Syrian-Iraqi border. The total number in service for 2017 is over two million service members, making up our armed forces today. Not only have brave men and women made sacrifices for our great country, but so have their families, especially those whose loved ones made the ultimate sacrifice for God, country, and family. At this time, could all veterans, current military, and their families please stand? The human spirit soars when inspired by the example of those who exhibit selflessness every day for a higher cause. We honor our veterans tonight and their families. The band will now perform, Then Come the Heroes.
Local hero, Hilliard Almond Wilbanks, was born in Cornelia, Georgia, on July 26, 1933. Captain Wil Wilbanks had to leave his wife, Rosemary, and children, Tommy, Paula, John, and Debbie, to go to Vietnam in the support of the 23rd Ranger Battalion. He was mortally wounded, saving his battalion from an ambush on February 24, 1967. His citation read, the President of the United States of America, authorized by Act of Congress, March 3, 1896, has awarded in the name of the Congress the Medal of Honor to the Captain Hilliard A. Wilbanks, United States Air Force, for conspicuous gallantry and intrepidity in action at the risk of his, of his life above and beyond the call of duty. As a forward air controller near the Lat Republic of Vietnam on the 24th of February 1967, Captain Wilbanks was pilot of an unarmed light, light aircraft flying visual um, ahead of a South Vietnamese Army Ranger Battalion. His incentive his intensive search revealed a well-concealed and numerically superior hostile force posed to ambush and the advancing raiders. The Viet Cong, realizing that Captain Wilbanks' discovery had compromised their position and ability to launch a surprise attack, immediately fired on the small aircraft with the available firepower they had. The enemy then began advancing against the exposed forward elements of the Ranger force, which were pinned down by a devastating fire. Captain Wilbanks recognized that close support aircraft could not arrive in time to enable the Rangers to withstand the advancing enemy onslaught. With full knowledge of the limitations of his unarmed, unarmored, light, aircraft, and the great danger imposed by the enemy's vast firepower, he unhesitatingly assumed a covering close support role, flying through a hail of withering fire at treetop level. Captain Wilbanks passed directly over the advancing enemy and inflicted many casualties by firing his rifle out of the side window of his aircraft, despite increasingly intense anti-aircraft fire. Captain Wilbanks continued to completely disregard his own safety and made repeated low passes over the enemy to divert their fire away from the Rangers. His daring tactics successfully interrupted the enemy advance, allowing the Rangers to withdraw to safety from their perilous position. During his final courageous attack to protect the withdrawing forces, Captain Wilbanks was mortally wounded with, and his bullet-riddled aircraft crashed between the opposing forces. Captain Wilbanks' magnificent actions saved numerous friendly personnel from certain injury or de death. His unparalleled concern for his fellow man and his extraordinary heroism were in the highest traditions of the military service and have ref reflected great credit upon himself and the United States Air Force.
Of all the songs written during and about the Civil War, perhaps none is as strongly identified with the Union cause today as Julia Ward Howe's Stirring the Battle Hymn of the Republic. For over 138 years, this song has been a fixture in patriotic programs and is still sung in schools and churches across the nation. In the early days of the war, the song John Brown's Body was wildly popular, although in its original incarnation, it had nothing to do with the notorious abolitionist leader hanged at Harper's Ferry on December 2nd, 1859. It became inextricably identified with him and acquired new verses that were sung by federal troops and union sympathizers alike. The tune was borrowed from an old Methodist hymn, Say Brothers, Will You Meet Us, by William Stead. In November 1861, Julia Howe, the daughter of a well-to-do New York City banker, was touring Union Army camps near Washington, D.C. with Reverend James Freeman Clark and with her husband, Dr. Samuel Howe, who was a member of President Lincoln's military sanitary commission and a fervent abolitionist. During the course of their vi camp visit, the group began to sing a popular song among them, John Brown's Body. In one of those rare flashes of inspiration that leave their mark on history today, Reverend Clark was moved to suggest that Miss Howells pin new, should pin new lyrics to the familiar tune. She replied that she had often thought about doing that exactly. The following morning, as Mrs. Howe later described it, she awoke in the gray of the early dawn, and to my astonishment, found that the wished for lines were arranging themselves in my brain. I lay quite still until the last verse had completed itself in my thoughts. Then hastily arose, saying to myself, I shall lose this if I don't write it down immediately. Here's the battle hymn of the Republic. 